Hello and welcome today. We are going to be looking at using my Vim setup. In a previous video, I showed you how to set up your NeoVim configuration to be like mine. And today, uh, we're going to look at how to actually use some of the, mainly the snippets that I've created to kind of guide you through stuff. So these, I'm going to show you how they work a little bit. And uh, in a future video, I might we'll go into more detail on how to make your own, but we'll touch on that today. But basically, uh, I'm going to show you how it can improve and, and speed things up. We're going to basically create a couple applications in mere minutes. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, here we are at my desktop. Uh, first off, uh, gitlab.com forward slash melex1000 forward slash fbk dash neovim. That's films by Chris. Uh, and that's where you can go and get my setup for neovim. Basically, you run this command and then this command answers some questions and you should be set up to go as long as you're on a Debian based system. I should have said that in the last video because you are using apt for certain things, although you can easily make uh, very few changes uh, to get to work on non Debian based systems. It's just it uses apt a couple times the package manager. Anyway, let's go ahead. I am running a web server and in a moment we will be creating some web applications which easily could be packaged into desktop or phone applications. But we're going to do really quick with some templates that I use all the time. Basically if I use some sort of functionality multiple times across different um, projects I'm working on, I'm going to create a template for it. Uh, so again, there's nothing in this directory. Here we are in the same directory. You can see there's nothing in there. I'm going to type in Vim, but in the last video, as we talked about, I have it set up so Vim actually points to NeoVim. I'm going to create an index.html. When I run that, you can see by default, even though that file didn't exist, it creates a little uh, template for us to start. So I can type in my site, right? Come into here, refresh this, and now you can see up in the tab here, it says my site as the title. I can go down to the body tag and I can easily type in a div tag with a header tag, hello world. Save that, refresh, hello world. I can go back into here. I don't know why I exited out of that. <laughs> We're going to uh, do a horizontal line break and then we will create a button, a type button, sure. And then we will say, click me, right? And now we've created a button called click me. And actually, if we were to change this from type, let's go ahead and just, there's different templates I have for buttons, but we'll call this class. So now we have a button called uh, with a class of button. Save that. I'm going to come up here to the C styling tags and I'm going to type in button and under buttons you can see I have some CSS. So we have different options here. I'm going to go to the CSS. We just add in some CSS options here. I'm going to refresh and you can see by default we have green buttons but we're going to do different colors in a moment. Let's actually let's go completely out of this. I'm going to delete everything we have in here and I'm going to type in login and this is just and this may change in the future creates a login template so anytime I need to create a login form on a website I just have to do that and it I just have to you know put in uh, where it's going to post this information to it already has requires set so if I don't fill in the username it's going to say that that's required if I do fill it in and leave the username break it's going to say that's required you know and then we do that and it actually doesn't go anywhere because I don't have it set to go anywhere I guess it just refreshes the page also if I hit F12 you will see what this looks like on a mobile device. Not too bad. That's fine for login. Let's actually create an application though. Uh, so let's go back in here and I'm just going to delete everything in this file. And what I'm going to do here is, and what you see on the bottom there, I'll talk about more in a future video. That's part of lazy Vim setup. And it actually, whenever you press a key that requires more than one functionality, you know, more than one option, it shows you what your options are. Uh, so if I was to hit space, or in normal mode, hit space, it brings up this menu telling, oh, now if you hit B, you can go to buffers, or F, you can find file. It just gives you a little preview of that. We're not really looking at that too much today. Uh, but what I am going to do here is I'm just going to type in flex, which is really a grid application, but uh, originally called this flex. And uh, this is going to create this entire web page for me. Uh, if I come back here and refresh, uh, no, yeah, we don't want to resubmit that. So this is what it looks like, right? We have an input field and two buttons. Okay. Uh, let's go up here. Let's go ahead and just, we don't need what's in that script. We're going to create our own script from templates here in a moment. Uh, but again, I can type in buttons up here and I can choose that CSS. And now by default, these buttons, it, it thinks that I'm submitting a form. Let's just go ahead and go boom. Hopefully I'll fix that. There we go. We have green buttons, but if I want to make one of these a red button, I can say this one, I can add in a class of button dash red and I can lighten this tag and say cancel. 
right? And we can refresh this, and now that button's red. We can make this one, uh, delete and tag, and I can say submit. And when we do that, now that says submit, but we can also change the color of it to one of our colors that we have set up here. Blue, red, gray, black. I might add other colors in the future. The default is green, so there is no option for green. You just leave it as the default. But when we do this, now we have a blue submit button. We have an input option here. Uh, let's do something better than just an input option. Let's create a data list. So we have uh, drop down options, which is a select uh, element in HTML. And those are great. Uh, you can quickly uh, jump to stuff in the list if it's alphabetical and you know what it starts with. I like data lists for two reasons and you can uh, turn some of this functionality on off. Uh, but let's go ahead and create a data list. So in here, I'm just gonna type in data list. And I have some templates for data list. You have just an empty data list. You have data list that also has the input and label for that. Uh, that's great. But then we also have the data list with some JavaScript. So let's go ahead and do that. Now you notice that there's some options here, dollar sign one, two, and three. That's gonna allow us to autofill stuff or jump to where we need to fill in stuff and we'll autofill it in other places. What I mean by that, so what is this label for? This label is for user right and then we can say hit tab and say select a user Ooh, that's not how you spell user user and i'll hit tab and then what list are we going to use we'll use the users list and now we're down here and i can type in john and jack so this is all the template that we just pasted in here really quickly um it did create the javascript right here where those are we're going to move that in a few minutes but let's go ahead and look at this we'll refresh now the formatting isn't perfect yet uh we can mess with that later on uh but we have this input which is actually a data field and actually before i click on that i'm going to come back in here and i'm going to set autocomplete to off why am i doing that because uh it will give you suggestions besides what we have in our list if we don't do that, which may show some of my private information if I filmed in forms uh, where the user, where there's an input called uh, users, which is a good chance it might show uh, an email address or something like that. So I'm gonna set that to autocomplete off for this. I'm gonna refresh, which might be a good idea in general if you want them to select something from your list. But I'll go ahead and hit tab and when I hit down here, you can see John and Jack. Those are my only two options. I can choose one and uh, that's great. It, if I'm in a long list, I can type in O and it's going to narrow down the list. It's somewhat smart. Unlike a regular drop down list where you have to know, uh, like if it's alphabetical by last name, you have to start typing their last name. But with this, if I have it first name and last name, it is going to uh, allow me to search first or last name or part of their name. So let's actually create a longer list than just John and Jack. So what I'm going to do here is I actually have some scripts I've created on my computer, one called uh, US States. And what that does is just prints out a list of US states because I, I just have had to do that so many times. And I'm gonna create a folder or a file called states.php. And then I also have random users, right? Random, random names, random users, random names. There we go, random names is the one I want. And I'm gonna put that into a file called um, users.php. Okay, so now I have a PHP file that has the random names and and then I also have a uh, states because we're going to do that in a moment as well. So I'm going to say index.html, go back into here. Now, let's go ahead and actually uh, delete in tags and I'll come down here and I will paste that here because that's just going to be a better place to have my script. Not that it hurts to have it in the middle there. I'm also going to move this build data function. It's right there, but I'm going to put it right there. And let's go ahead and save that. And then in here, we are going to use another template that I've created, another snippet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in get. And we have a few options here. I have get JSON, but we're not getting JSON, we're just creating a list. So I'm going to uh, create a function called get. And what this is, this is a function that I can use to do uh, an Ajax. Basically, I'm, I'm pulling information in the background from another page. So what I can do now is I can come up in here and I can type in get, and I'm going to say users.php. And in here, I am now going to put all this in here, set the indentation and save that now. Instead of having a static list in here, we're pulling it from that user's PHP file. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to recreate uh, that variable. I'm just gonna call it users, which would be better named than just data item, right? So users uh, items, 
and I will say that equals data. And this is just a text list. It isn't in any format like JSON or anything like that. So I'm going to say dot split at new lines, okay? And then here, instead of data items, I'm going to say users items. I can reach name this item to user, but I'm not going to bother doing that. And then here, what I'm going to do, delete this. So what we're doing here is this function, when it's called, is going to get our user data list. And then it's going to get the list of usernames. It's going to split so each username is, is now, it's now all in a variable based. Each line is a new item in that array. Then we're going to go through each of those, a four, and then we're going to uh, add to that list that option. So if I did everything correctly, I should be able to come in here. And now when I come in here and click on this, I should have something not right. And we got users.php does not exist. That's because I named it user. Let's go ahead and move user to users because there's more than one in there and that's not right either. Now come back in here, refresh this page. Okay, everything seems to be working. Now we have a list of names in here. And now I can type something like AR and it's going to list a name that only has AR in it. I can ARG. And now I've narrowed it down and I can choose one of these names. Well, that's great. Uh, and even though I can search the list, it still drives me crazy when lists are not alphabetical. There's no reason for this list not to be alphabetical because we can make it alphabetical so easily. Uh, all we have to do is after we've created this list, we will reassign users items equals or just dot sort. Now, when I come in here, they're alphabetical, but I can still type in like D-U-N and now I have two Duncans, I can choose Sue. Now, good thing and bad thing about using a data list and an input like this is I can type in whatever I want. I can type in John Jake. That's an interesting name. And that'd be fine, right? It will let me do that. And maybe you want people to be able to input stuff, but let's say you only want them to pick a name from this list. Well, I have a function for that. So we just come in here into our JavaScript and I'm gonna type in data list and I'm gonna choose data list force. And what that's going to do is any data list on this page now will be required to pick a name from the list. You can type it out, but it's better to pick it. So let's go ahead and refresh. And in here, I'm going to pick a name. I'll just type in King and I'll choose Benjamin King, and that's great. If I tab out of it, that name is now in there. But if I was to change it, if I was to say Kings, it now says, please select a valid uh, value. So it's forcing me to select something in the list. And of course, we can come up here to our input, and we can change this to be required equals true, I think is what I need to do. Do I need to put that in quotations? Let's... Uh, see for that to work it needs to be inside a form so let's go ahead type for and we will choose our form here and again we can fill in stuff like we can tell it to submit to submit.php method can be post and then what we want to do here is we want to put uh, all this inside here auto indent control r now if i hit submit it's gonna tell me, please fill out this, and we have to choose something. If I just type something that's not in there, it voids it out and it still tells me to fill it out. Then once I do that, I can say post. Of course, submit.php does not exist. Okay, let's go ahead and create another list that we can fill from. So what I'm gonna do here is I am going to uh, create another flex tag. And then what I'm going to say is I'm going to say data and I have data list. I'm going to do this type of data list. I'm going to say for state and I'm going to say select a state. And then I'm going to say for states is our list. And then down here, I am just going to delete that. Now down in our function here where we are building stuff, whoops. What I'm going to do is I'm going to co just copy this. I guess I have a template, but it's just easier at this point to paste that. And we can say states. And then down here, I'll just call this states. 
And here I will sort states. There's actually, I do have shortcuts that I can auto fix, rename stuff, multiple things at once, but I'm not doing that. Uh, states, and that's the thing about a lot of these templates and stuff, you just need to get in the habit of using them. Uh, so we have state states, and then we also need to here say our state list is states. If I did everything right, I run this. Now we have user. I can choose a username from here. Uh oh, uh, we overwrote our names. So there I have Florida. Let's go ahead and have a look at that. The problem is down here. I didn't uh, say state list. State, 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 state. Yeah. So now we have our users. Again, I can choose like King, Chester King. And then here I have a list of all states. I can type in FL for Florida. Uh, I can type in um, CAL for California. I can do NY and get New York. And then I can submit that. And then of course we can come back in here and add a header to this. We can just call it H1, oops, H1 user input or something, HR. Now we have a little bit of a line break. And there we go, we have our application. If I wanted to, to like center that, I can come up here. I do have a little center CSS class equals center. And now it's centered. I can bump up the, the, the font for that if I wanted. Uh, but you can see how easily we can create an app this is what it would look like on a mobile device. Looks a little bit nicer on a mobile device. You can always adjust the spacing on stuff like this. Uh, but we can easily submit all that stuff. And again, submit.php doesn't exist. So you can see that we have these templates. And I just wanted to do all that as an example. So we're only 10 minutes into the tutorial. Let's go ahead and look at our snippets and how they work. So in here, under the directory I'm in, is my home directory, config.config. Uh, NVIM, Lua, FBK Films by Chris, snippets, and then I'm in the HTML directory, right? If I go back out to the snippets directory, I can list here, we have a folder called all, CSS, HTML, JavaScript, PHP, and SH for shell. So you basically, if you wanted in, in my little setup, and there's, there's probably a better way to do this, but this is how I have it set up. You create a directory for the name of the language you're typing in, and then you just create templates in there. And uh, so for example, Let's go into the shell script directory, right? I have uh, for colors, errors, functions, uh, check if they're root, a little wget, wget to a file, a gpl. Okay, so let's, let's see how all that works. I'm gonna go back into here and for the tutorial, I'm just going to create a shell script called go. By default, it creates a little template for you and by default, it get, puts the gpl header at the top with the year, my name, and my website. I might change that. I, I've created this for myself and I'm just sharing it with you. But let's just say uh, we didn't have that. Well, I do have a little template. If I type in GPL, well, here's the GPL. I can hit enter here and then you can type your name here. It automatically puts in the year. Uh, for me, I can just type in KO because my name is so long. I just type KO and now it types Chris Acapinti. I'll hit tab. I'll type in FBK and I can go FBK site and it puts the site. Uh, I can now jump down here and I can say echo and I can type out films by Chris or I can just type FBK and hit enter. Well, it didn't do it that time. I don't know why. Maybe the quotations are throwing things off. FBK. Yeah, there we go. That was weird. Uh, so now we have that. And as we uh, talked about in the last video, once I'm in normal vote mode, I can hit spacebar R and it splits the screen and runs it here. It pauses for the output. Uh, and... Uh, Let's use another thing. So let's say I wanted to do some colors. I can just type in color and it here, I hit enter and it pastes in all these variables for colors. So now I can come in here and I can say dollar sign red. And then here I can set it back to uh, normal. Now, when I run it, you can see that text is red. Uh, I can come in here and I can change this to dollar sign blue variable. Oh, I don't know why I did that. Uh, space R, and now it's films by and Chris is blue, and then it goes back to normal color. Uh, so how does that work? I mean, it, it pasted all this in there. Let's have a look um, here at the colors file. 
and that's it. It's just it's just the text. And so what happens is I create a file in here. So I'm in the sh directory for shell scripts. So I can create something and I can call it hello world dot sh, right? And then here I can delete all that and I can just say function and I can actually use my template here to uh, create a function and I can call it hello and then I can say echo hello world and then I can save that. Then I can go into my snippets directory and I can say compile snippets. Really should be called build snippets. It's going to create uh, this file right here, which it then brings you into so you can look at it. Uh, but what all that does is it takes all those files and creates that config file. Now, um, oops, wrong file, wrong button. Uh, I can type in uh, go.sh. It knows I'm in a shell script file, right? It shows a little icon down here that I'm in a shell script file. I can come down to the bottom here and I can just start typing go and it does nothing for me. G O. Oh, no, no, I called it, I didn't call it go. That was the, yeah, okay, it's the name of the script I'm in. I can start typing hello, and I can hit enter, and it just puts in that hello world, that function. So again, I can just type in e, uh, H-E, and hit enter, and it creates that function. So I can just create uh, lines of code, multiple lines of code, put them into a file in the proper directory, run that compile, or that compile uh, snippets, and now when I'm in that particular uh, file format, it will allow me to autocomplete. Let's, let's create another one. So let's go back into here and let's just vim, what do we want to call it? We'll call it print things. I don't know, uh, .sh. And again, the, the little default template there's usually nice, but not for what we're doing right now. But I can just say echo, hello world. Uh, then I can say, this is a line. And of course, it, it all completed something I, <laughs> uh, line function that I actually created. Uh, and that's one thing you gotta get used to, again, uh, with the autocompletion, it takes a little getting used to. This is my function that I've created that creates a line across the screen. I've done tutorials on that before. Uh, let's go ahead and continue, and I'll just say line, and then here I'll say, hot dog. I don't know. I'll save that. Again, I called that print things. So I'm going to now compile. Well, first of all, I've got to put that in the sh directory. Uh, move uh, print things into the sh directory. And then we will uh, compile our snippets. Now, if I go back in here and I open up uh, this script, if I was to type in, start typing print, it says print things, and it will actually print everything that's in that file. Uh, it goes a little bit beyond that. Uh, so for example, if I was to go into my HTML directory and look at the data list uh, HTML I have here, you can see that we have uh, brackets one, brackets two, brackets three, and I have it set up so you can do up to uh, five of these. Um, and basically if you do double brackets with a number, no spaces, uh, that will allow you when you use that template to tab to those spaces to fill them in. And then if you do uh, brackets with the dashes and the same number, so basically you would fill this in here and then we'll auto fill that same thing into here without having to type it multiple times. So then uh, what list are we going to? We're going to go, it's gonna fill that in there so you don't have to type it more than once and worry about typos. I hope that makes sense. Again, this was supposed to be a quick look and we're at 17 minutes, uh, but I hope you saw with our HTML example uh, how quickly uh, this can help. So again, let me go into here. Let's say I wanted to create an error function. I've done videos on that before. Uh, let me go, let me just go up to here and I'm going to type in error, hit enter. Now I have an error function. Now I can say if something happens, I can say error. And when that runs that, if it gets to this point in the code, it will say error in red. It will say hello world in red, and then it will exit out. So that's basically what it's doing here. It actually uh, assumes that we don't have our color codes up here, it automatically creates the red and normal so that your error messages will be in red if, as long as your terminal supports that. 
I hope this all made sense. Uh, I was going kind of fast because I just wanted to show you how something like this can speed things up. Uh, but if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And uh, uh, maybe I'll do more videos on this. Thanks for watching. Filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.